Welcome back to Cup Check, everybody. I'm out here with Dawson. He's got a new mustache. Uh, I got a new mic, and we got a new idea for a vid. So, Dawson, how you doing? Doing great. I'm pretty excited for this video. I'm always applying pressure to Zach to come up with new, innovative video ideas, and uh, he finally, finally found a good idea for a fantasy vid. So here we are today. As you know from the title, we're going to be spinning the wheel and talking about random fantasy players and their season outlook. All right, I'm spinning. Ready, set, tick, 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 tick. tick. We have landed on. Goldschmidt, Paul Goldschmidt. Hey, Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, Zach, you want to lead us off? What do you think about Goldschmidt for this season? Um, okay, Goldschmidt. I like him. Goldschmidt is a second-half player. If he is a guy that is not performing super well in the first half, I think it's, it's, really, it's a good idea to go make a trade for him. Um, that being said, I still see a lot of value in Goldschmidt, and I think he's an underrated guy. He's always been kind of underrated. And he'll even get to a few stolen bases, which is kind of surprising. Um, in our draft, I took Jose Abreu over him. That was kind of who I was deciding between, and I still like Jose Abreu more. Apparently, you don't. Yeah, but, um, I think that that decision is purely Reds-based. Uh, Zach, being a diehard Red fan, Reds fan, just hates the Cardinals. From a fantasy perspective, there's no reason to take a Brayu over Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt is better in every single statistical way, including baseball savant, where Goldschmidt is just an absolute god. Uh, not to mention, Goldschmidt's ADP is going at 53.6, uh, according to ESPN Live Draft Trends, uh, and a Brayu is down at 65. So you do got to kind of pay up a little bit more for Goldie, but that's just because he provides so much more. And like Zach said, a really a second half performer and you know if the cardinals kind of smell that playoff push uh which i'm expecting them to kind of have like they're going to be competing for that wild card or even just in a close divisional race that kind of elevates goldschmidt's play uh a guy who has an outside shot looking at the hall of fame so these next years are going to be really critical for goldschmidt so expect him to go all out and give it all he's got all right well i don't love the uh Jose Abreu slander. I'll spin the wheel again. I mean, Round Abreu, two, here did, we go. Nah, Abreu just did not play as good as Goldie last year. It's just not it's just a fact. Tick, 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 tick. We have landed on Kyle Tucker. Uh, Dawson, what do you think about Kyle Tucker? Dude, I love Kyle Tucker. Um, it really pained me when I offered him uh, in a trade to Zach that he did decline, but I do love Kyle Tucker for this year. Um, but I will say I'm not willing to draft Kyle Tucker over Trout, over uh, Harper, and those are kind of the decisions you have to make on draft day. I do love Kyle Tucker, and I think he provides so much, but where you have to draft him, I think I'm not going to have as many shares um, of Kyle Tucker as I as I would like to have just because of who he's going around. Yeah, I completely agree. I love Kyle Tucker. The mix of power and speed, uh, it's, like, it's a, a thing we like to talk about with a lot of fantasy players. He'll get a lot of stolen bases. And I I think he's kind of underrated because he just he doesn't seem like one of those guys He's more sneaky good. He, he looks like Abraham Lincoln, just a lengthy lefty, but he just gets the job done. And the Astros lineup is still really strong. So I think, wasn't he hitting like sixth in the lineup? Yeah, and it looks like they've actually slated him to be hitting seventh as of right now, uh, which I think is preposterous. Uh, it's about time that they start respecting Kyle Tucker and what he provides. Kyle Tucker's ADP is currently at 18 so uh, you're choosing between him, Freddie Freeman, Trout, uh, Raphael Devers, Matt Olson, Bo Bichette. And like I said earlier, those are just some really good names with kind of more proven track record records. But at the same time, Kyle Tucker's there. Uh, he really put up the stats last year to kind of earn that ADP, hitting 294 with 30 bombs, 14 bags. I only expect uh, the young superstar to continue to grow. 
So I do like Kyle Tucker a lot for this season, uh, especially if he slips down the draft board and some of those other names are taken. Yeah. Great player. Good dude to pick, depending on how high you have to take him. Uh, all right. Alrighty. My Third. turn to spin the wheel. <laughs> yes, yeah, Bennett. We will be discussing. Oh, Trevor Bauer. Oh, this was Zach's nightmare. I told him to include Trevor Bauer uh, on the wheel. And Zach was Zach was ultimately terrified of this outcome. Trevor, what do Bauer, we say, man? Dude, it's hard to know what to say. All right. So uh, Bauer's outlook for 2022 is is just really difficult. Uh, the league has allowed Ozuna back in the league, but at the same time, Ozuna is not the vocal player that Bauer is and might not be getting blackballed uh, in the same way that I think Bauer might be by owners and especially Rob Manfred. Uh, I, it's hard to say. I don't know. Uh, I would, I would think Bauer is worth a late round flyer just because if he does uh, indeed find his way back onto the field, you're getting a guy who can, who can be honestly a Cy Young finisher, uh, a guy who's going to put up really good stats, especially in that Dodgers team. It's just a question of if he's going to play. And if he does, I, I would love him on my team because I think he's going to provide fantasy value if he's out there. Um, just really hard to say uh, if he will be playing this not this year or not. Yeah, it's tough. It's really not looking like he'll be playing at all in April. Um, you'll lose a pretty big chunk of value, and we know that the MLBs kept him on leave. And there's just there's no there's no telling. It's tough for us to say anything because we just don't know. We don't know. But if he comes back. He can for sure be a top five pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. What's gonna be what's gonna be frustrating is he's gonna be eating up that bench spot as you wait and hope for him to be cleared to play. Um, so you're just gonna have to weigh your own team, look at your needs, and see if you have the positional strength to be able to eat that bench spot or not on Bauer, a potential league winner if he finds his way back onto the field with where you can get him in the draft. All right, your turn to spin the wheel, Zach. Uh, let's see right. who we will be discussing. Next. Spin in the wheel. <laughs> okay, a, a little bit of more of an interesting wild card for 2022. 2022, we have Jared Kellenick. Ooh, okay, this is a tough one. Uh, opinions on Kellenick are split down the middle. Some people love him, some people hate him. I'm not willing to, to really like go out of my way to draft him, especially at the ADP. If he breaks out, which I really hope he does, and that young Mariners team good on him. But at the same time, the Mariners are looking to win. And if Kalanick is hitting like he was last year when he got pulled up, um, I could honestly see them sending him down or benching him or doing whatever because the Mariners are looking to win. And I just, I don't know. I think Kalanick has a breakout eventually. I just don't know when. Because I think all the talent is there. Uh, it's just going to come down to the mindset and the mental fortitude that he's going to have to kind of, kind of show to kind of break out of um, a rough start to a career. Yeah, I don't see him getting sent down just because he was the golden child of the Mariners for so long. But the question is whether he'll be fantasy productive. Um, and the ADP is currently at 231. So, uh, honestly, I am willing to take a flyer on Kalanick over Mike Yastrzemski, Randall Grichek, who might be pretty solid now that he's in Colorado. I would still also take him over Max Kempler, Robbie Grossman, kind of the guys going around this area. But I would not pencil him in as my third outfielder, uh, especially in a competitive one year league where you're trying to win now. Yep, I think he's still a lot more value in a dynasty style league. And and I, I still think he can be valuable. I think he'll he's young. He'll steal a few bases for you. And if he can just if he can play well enough to stay on the field, he will have value. He ended the season a lot better than he started the season last year. Definitely. So the, the talent's there. I just don't think that he is going to be elite 
Um, so the guys that are really, really elite, they come into the league guns ablaze. And like we, we saw it with the, the young stars like Soto Acuna. I, I know that's not everyone's going to be Soto and Acuna, but I don't see Kellenic being elite at this point. Yeah, but you never know. Uh, guys like Vlad, guys like maybe Kellenic take a little bit longer of time to develop. Zach, I have a fun little question for you here. Start bench cut. Who are you going with between Kellenic, Akil Badu, and Joe Adele for the 2022 season? I'm starting Kellenic. Okay. I'm benching. I'm benching Joe Adele and cutting Akil Badu. No love for Akil Badu. Uh, I'm sorry for Akil. Akil hit 260 with 18 bags and 13 bombs and his limited ABs last year. Just kind of an electric player on maybe another exciting team. Uh, all guys who could really break out and be something special. You never know. But uh, that's that's Zach's uh, start bench cut for those three players. All right, last spin of the wheel here. Let's see who we land on. Uh, Matt Chapman. Hey, the, Matt the, the Chapman. freshly traded to the Blue Jays, Matt Chapman. How do you think that trade is going to affect him? Dude, that's huge for Matt Chapman. Uh, just being in that atmosphere, that Toronto lineup, who, I mean, you never know. Maybe they play some more games in that minor league field and just hit absolute tanks. Uh, it's kind of doubtful. I'm pretty sure they're starting in Toronto. Yeah. But yeah, Matt Chapman uh, currently going at pick 138, uh, kind of around guys like Josh Donaldson, Justin Turner, and Key Brian Hayes. Uh, I definitely like him more than those names listed. Chapman does have that elite power. It's just going to be a question of his average and on base, which I have to believe will be over what he had last year at 210. Yeah, I'm expecting a big bounce back from, from Matt Chapman. A guy that he has gotten up to 36 home runs before. Granted, that wasn't the juice ball year of 2019. But he's got serious power potential. Uh, strikes out way too much. He's got to cut that down. Last year, 202 strikeouts. And like you said, a 210 batting average. I think the the, the stadium change is huge for him because Toronto is tiny. And that, that'll help him sneak out a lot more. I like it. Surrounded by Vladdy, um, Bo Bichette, Tay Oscar, and just the... He's in a winning environment now, which can spark something in a lot of guys. And third base is a weak position. We've been over that a lot. So, sure, Not to mention, the last Oakland athletic to go to Toronto had an absolute career, career revival in Marcus Simeon posting all-time career numbers. So, hey, what's to say Matt Chapman might revive his career in a similar fashion with ESPN projecting him to hit 37 bombs in that Toronto, li- in that Toronto lineup. So, yeah. That's going to do it for a Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Can we cut that out? Yeah. May I also mention a career reviver in Josh Donaldson, who got traded from Oakland to Toronto and won the MVP that year. So you just never know. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's something about that Oakland air to the Toronto air. Maybe, maybe there's something in the water that just changes hitters for the better. So, yeah, that's going to do it for our Spin the Wheel episode, a fun little episode. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. And if you like this style of video, let us know, and we could continue to do some kind of more, more episodes like this in the future. Thank you all for watching. Signing off.